Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on oxidation and reduction. Uh, this is a A2 lesson and I'll, um, I'll assume that you know uh, about oxidation and reduction of alcohols. So I'm only going to go through a recap. So over here we have a primary alcohol which will get oxidized to an aldehyde. A suitable oxidizing reagent is um, Cr2O72- minus with H+, the H+, is taken from sulfuric acid, and this Cr2O7 is taken from potassium dichromate, and that would oxidize to make an aldehyde. It also further oxidizes if we don't use a distillation apparatus, we would further oxidize it to make a carboxylic acid. The reason why we have a distillation apparatus is that as soon as we make an aldehyde, we want it to be cooled off as soon as possible so it does not get oxidized into something that we do not want. Um, if we just want to go from primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid, uh, even though it stops at aldehyde and still carries on, we can just use a reflux apparatus and just reflux it, the continuous, continuous boiling, bubbling. And for secondary alcohols, that gets oxidized into a ketone so we can just write that there and um, with reducing tertiary alcohols don't get oxidized or reduced by the way um, with reduction a suitable um, reducing agent is NaBH4 uh, what happens we can depict that with a H and obviously um, just basically it just goes the opposite way so for example ketones can be oxidized reduced to make secondary alcohols, carboxylic acids can be reduced to make the primary alcohol and the carboxylic acids can be reduced to make aldehyde and then to make the primary alcohol. So how does this actually happen? So what happens is that we've got our aldehyde over here and we've got the sodium borohydride that I was talking to you about. Now this sodium borohydride, if you remember, um, sodium is a cation and the BH4 is an anion. So we have a um, negative charge on the borohydride and this, this, this hydride, this borohydride is a great source of hydride ions. So what happens is that one of the hydrogen detaches from it. When that happens, the electrons um, goes to the hydrogen and we have an excess of an electron here. Because if you notice, hydrogen has only one electron and we've got two here. So, we have got this hydride ion right here. Now what happens is that we go through a process called nucleophilic addition. Now, what happens, if you remember nucleophilic addition, I'm going to write all of it down. The electrons are attracted to the positively, the slightly positive charge on the carbon and the slightly negative, well, not the slightly negative charge on the oxygen. It's just, attack, it's just attracted to that. Um, if you remember, oxygen is electronegative. That means all the electrons that it's sharing is more towards its side than it is the carbon, which produces this dipole. Now, um, what happens is that there's a transfer of electrons. We have to use that. We have to depict that using curly arrows. That is not a curly arrow. I don't think I could be. I don't think I'm able to draw a curly arrow. Something like that. So the electrons go over here, and at the same time as the electrons move in here, the electrons from the carbon move towards the oxygen and breaks this double bond. Because remember, the curly arrows show the movement of electrons in the formation or the breaking of a covalent bond. So the pair of um, electrons move over here and we end up with a molecule like this, where we have the oxygen with only one bond to the carbon. Now if you remember the transfer of electrons has happened, that means we have got an excess of electrons here, so we got a negative charge. Now remember, the sodium borohydride will be in aqueous solution, that means we have got lots and lots of H2O spinning around. Obviously I have not included space for myself, so... I've just included, I just cleared up a bit of space here. Now, if you um, if you remember, H2O is a polar molecule. So we have, here we go, that's a bit better. So if you remember, um, H2O is a polar molecule. 
and we have a um, slightly positive charge on the hydrogen and a slightly negative charge on the oxygen. So what happens is that the, this oxygen gets excited that we've got a nice positive charge here and then we've got a, a transfer of electrons through curly arrows again and so the pair of electrons move towards the hydrogen and when that happens we have got a movement of electrons towards the oxygen because this has formed a bond with the H to make OH and therefore we have broken this bond and ended up with a OH minus. So it's going to end up looking like, like this. And that is how we end up with an primary alcohol. Now, lucky, lu lucky enough for you, we do not need to learn about um, the mechanism of the oxidation of alcohols. So we will leave it there.